I am not sure whether it's a humane thing to put me in the midst of a panel of eminent people like this. Be that as it may, I am delighted because I am a fan of all three of them. So thank you very much, Mr. President and the college for having given me this opportunity. Now, boxing is a brutal sport, almost uniquely human, perhaps with the exception of a few kangaroos here and there. But even in a brutal environment like that, you do get instances of humaneness. So I will play you a clip, which is, it is a very famous clip of a boxing match between Muhammad Ali, who was known as the greatest, and another rival of his. And uh, please, if you can, observe towards the latter part exactly what Muhammad Ali does. Notice that uh, Muhammad Ali gesticulates or gestures twice before the referee realizes that what he was saying was to come and stop the fight because he had realized that his opponent was not in a fit state to continue. Uh, some of the commentators say that he may have even saved the life of Quarry. Now, there's two things. A gesture is a very small communication. Right? But it is the humaneness of Ali that made him use a very minor communication skill. Right? I'll get back to this as we go on. Now, Rabindranath Tagore wrote a collection of poems known as Gitanjali. And in that, he comments about God. Uh, even though I'm an atheist, I like what he says. He says that you will not find God in meditation centers, in temples, but you will find God in the pouring rain, under the burning sun, when people work hard and they till their fields. The field, and here we have the boxing arena. So I would like to replace the word God with humaneness. This is humaneness. 
and this is what it can do. Of course, the question is whether humaneness is entirely of humans. Because those of you who have pets, who enjoy the company of pets, will know that the pets demonstrate all these characteristics. Compassion, empathy, love. All these are demonstrated by animals. And what is more, you have an app now which, in which the machine will tell the doctor how to be more humane. So a machine is telling the doctor, the human. And uh, you can get your words couched in a more humane language. So question is whether humaneness is only of humans, I think, uh, is a bit of a problem. But it's a concept. And I have no problem with the concept. And of course, communication skills are obviously skills. So what is evident here is that humaneness does not need communication skills. But communication skills can be advanced by humaneness. That's my topic. And from now on, I'll be leaving my topic and taking you down the garden path for two reasons. One is because Anoja and Saroj have done such an excellent job in talking about com compassion and uh, empathy and so on. And the other is because I think there's a need to bring in another kind of philosophy. The current philosophy behind humaneness is really um, uh, what is known as feminist ethics. It's not surprising, it's natural. The female is much closer to these caring kind of feelings than the male. And so uh, feminist ethics has taken over and it does not like the more rigid deontological ethics which are rule-based ethics which are produced by, which have been there for years. But I think there is a place in that and so, uh, let me bring in the other aspect. This is also someone who's known as one of the greatest in his field, Immanuel Kant. And uh, his concept was that there has to be a, a reason or a rationale for the way we think. And he rejected religion. He was a devout Catholic, but he did not want to even consider the fact that uh, we are good because God is good. He did not accept that. So he went on to define a separate set of rules uh, about what is good and bad and what is right to do in human behavior. And this is perhaps a simpler, maybe paraphrasing of one of his more important concepts. That is, he said that we should respect humanity in ourselves and in others. Because he, he held humanity at a very high esteem. We are able to think, we are able to evaluate, we are able to plan, we can implement, we can review, and we can change our plans. That is rationality and that is human thinking. So I would like to look at this kind of behavior from another aspect. It might sound negative, but I think it's kind of a balance of what the previous two have been talking about in a very positive way. Oops. Now I'm sure that none of you would have spoken like this to a patient, right? But there is a certain bit of empathy and compassion in this for some patients. They might appreciate that they have been saved the technicalities, the difficulties of understanding, and the doctor is explaining. But the sense I get from this is a kind of humiliation. So I think this is a failure on the part of the doctor as far as his own humanity is concerned. He is able to do much better than this. And also, it's a failure, it's a result, it will result on the humanity of the patient, because the patient will not necessarily take away from this consultation 
an, any good idea or any, any uh, concern, this quite a lot. But then, as I said, there is an app which is there for people to write humanely. So the machine is teaching people to become more human. This is the last uh, non-verbal communication that I would like to talk about. That's the sound of silence. And in communication, all of you know that we use silence in a very effective way. Um, with the pauses between sentences and statements, we, we make an impact on those who are listening to us. In the consultation, by not interfering, by keeping silent, we allow the patients to talk and to explain and to bring their feelings out. And in grieving process, we do the same thing. We use the sound of silence. Now, before I proceed further on this, I need to tell you who a GP is. A GP is a practitioner who is based in the community. You don't see GPs in institutions. And he handles, he or she, handles common and chronic problems. And the pr practitioner refers people with more complicated problems to appropriate levels of care. So we refer. Maybe the problem is in our writing, but the research has told, shown that we hardly get any response back from the professionals to whom we write. And that is a terrible sound of silence. Because these patients come back to us, they live in the community, and they have to live their lives. They may not have the luxury of being able to go back to a, another professional on a regular basis for obvious reasons. So they have to live their lives and in a kind of silence and we have to manage them in a kind of silence. And this is a terrible sound of silence, and I think all of us should do better. So my takeaway here is, humanness must guide communication. And we should respect humanity in ourselves as well as others. I thank Dr. Indika Karnamuni, who has been responsible for handling and preparing the slides for me, and also Mrs. Ms. Dimutu Gilasekara of the College of GP's office, who helped me to handle the video to remove the commentary from it and include the music in it. Thank you.